Gossip is a weed that troubles and chokes God's beautiful garden, the church. We must create culture and develop self-discipline that keeps his garden weed free. This message brings a scriptural perspective on the issue of gossip, slander, backbiting, tail-bearing and provides instructions on how to fight it. Stay tuned for more. Okay. Um, let's stand up to our feet and uh, make our declaration uh, today uh, together, and then we'll spend some time in God's Word. So we brought your Bible. Let's do the usual things. Hold your Bible high up in the air. Let's say this out loud, bold, and strong together. This is God's Word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of His blessing to many people. I receive His word. I believe His word. And I live by His word. Christ is my master. And to Him... I am an absolute surrender in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. you may be seated, please. I realize um, this is a passion week. Uh, many people look at it that way. And, uh, uh, you know, we have Good Friday. And if you want to, you'll have something on Wednesday. You'll have something on Thursday. And then it's Good Friday. And then it's uh, Easter Sunday and all of that. But uh, I just want to apologize. I don't have a Passion Week sermon, right? Uh, it's, it's going to be a different sermon, just something I felt we need to talk about as a church community. Let's begin uh, by reading Psalm 15. So if you have your Bible, uh, you could read with me, or you can look at, uh, look at it with me, or you could uh, just look at the verses that come up on the screen. We're going to read Psalm 15, verses 1 through 5, the entire psalm. It's a psalm of David. So David is uh, speaking this. He's writing it as he's inspired by, by the Lord, sharing his heart. He says, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? He who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. So he's asking this question, God, who can come into your presence? Who's going to dwell in your presence? Who's, or what kind of people will have this privilege of being in the presence of God? And here's his, the response. He walks uprightly, he works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. Notice verse 3. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend. In whose eyes a wild person is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change. He who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. So he's saying this is the kind of man who's going to dwell in the presence of God. I want to focus in on one aspect of what David touches here about the kind of person who dwells in the presence of God, and that's in verse 3. He says, he who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend. The New Living Translation renders verse 3 as, those who refuse to gossip or harm their neighbors or speak evil of their friends. So this morning, this entire message is going to be about, shh, no gossip. Right, so let's all do that together. Shh, no gossip. So that's our message this morning. And uh, um, we're talking about this intentionally. Uh, you know, uh, right from the beginning, from the time we started the church and the work of the ministry here, uh, we wanted to keep... Uh, certain things in place as a body, as a people. We know that as we come together, we come from different cultures, backgrounds, all kinds of things. And and so uh, uh, the possibilities of problems happening is great. 
like you know one preacher said more people means more problems <laughs> so it's not that people are bad it's just that we are all different and and so there are the possibilities the likelihood of different problems happening is great and so intentionally from the very beginning we, we try to be as careful as possible uh, uh, and keeping things uh, clean so as a community so that we could uh, enjoy being part of a church uh, of a local body where um, uh, when we go there we are edified we are built up and not necessarily hurt and torn down and so on and one important part of of keeping a healthy body of keeping a healthy community of believers is to maintain this very basic thing that there is no gossip allowed right so uh, in some places you go you see the no smoking sign up there so in church although you don't see it there's a no gossip sign everywhere <laughs> amen and so we want to talk about that a little bit uh, not ne- not because i feel like oh no suddenly there's a lot of gossip happening at apc it's not because of that it's because we want to release the words so that we all continue to maintain uh that that standard that we have as a church body i uh, continue to ensure that we protect the body uh keep it that way amen so we're going to talk about this and uh uh talk about some practical things we're going to look at it from scripture and also some practical things on this whole area of of gossip now i uh, i i will be using certain words interchangeably uh words like gossip backbiting slander backstabbing whisperer talebearer or uh, talebearing i'll use these words almost synonymously although they you know if you want to get technical and look at the dictionary meaning there's slight variations to it but essentially i'll be using them interchangeably uh because they all come together in one uh kind of one basket kind of thing uh the new king james for instance uses the word talebearer um uh for what we would call as gossiper or backbiter or slanderer now let's just give a little definition to these words just in case none of us know what it means gossip simply is idle talk or rumor uh, especially about personal or private affairs of other people uh, it's it's sp- spreading dirt and misinformation that's what gossip is like you're talking about them you're spreading dirt about them you're spreading misinformation about them talking about their personal and private things you know uh, Uh, around um now unfortunately uh uh you know some of us enjoy it i mean enjoy this thing i mean yeah yeah what's the latest gossip you know what's what's the latest news about so and so uh, and it's kind of like it's the way to pass time uh proverbs 18 and verse 8 says the words of a tale bearer are like tasty trifles and they go down into the inmost body or um, the new living translation renders it like this rumors are dainty morsels that sink deep into one's heart you know some people just really <laughs> they just take it in and it goes right in you know they're waiting for them it's like they had their full that day when you know they spent an hour in gossip or whatever <laughs> it's like dainty food backbiting is is malicious talk about someone who's not present um you're harming someone else's reputation uh without giving them a chance to defend themselves that's back biting literally you're biting their back you know uh backstabbing is kind of similar it's criticizing someone in a treacherous manner even though you pretend friendship in front of them so you're pretending friendship in front of them but really you go behind the back and you stab them you you destroy them a uh, slander uh, is making false negative malicious defamatory statements or reports about someone else is slandering them um tattle tale or tale bearer uh, is one who reports the wrong things of others to an authority uh usually with the intent of getting them into trouble and not to resolve a problem you know kids are kids do this a lot daddy you know what she did you <laughs> know and usually it's like i want you to get i want to get him into trouble <laughs> So it's kind of tattle telling but you know even adults play these games and, uh, and 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 the intent is not to solve the problem but to get the other person in trouble being a tale tale bearer. Now what's interesting is, is is just to look at what the scriptures say about these things. Way back in the Old Testament as as God was setting some things in place uh for his people for the for the community life. Uh, here's what he said in Leviticus 19 and verse 16. He said You shall not go about 
as a tail bearer among your people. Nor shall you take a stand against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. So he says, now this is the Old Testament. And God is saying, when you're all living together as a community, don't go about as a tail bearer among your people. Or the Living Translation puts it like this. Do not spread slanderous gossip among your people. Don't go around doing this. This is not good for the community life. Don't do it. Don't stand up against your own friend. Now, as we talk a little bit about gossip here, let's just also say what gossip is not. Uh, in an attempt to say no gossip, uh, we should not go to one a- the other end where we never point out faults and address issues that need to be addressed. So let's clarify that. Let's talk about what gossip is not, just to uh, give clarity. There are times when you know we would uh, have casual talk or sharing of information without demeaning someone. So you're talking about somebody else, of course, but you're not talking... To demean them. You're saying, hey, did you know so-and-so got a new job? That's not gossip. It's, it's like, wow, that's good news. I'm, I'm sharing it with you. Uh, he's got a new job. Or uh, did you know so-and-so, you know, he got 95 on all his exams. Whoa, it's great. <laughs> so that's good news. You're sharing something. That's, that's, you wouldn't put that as gossip because you're not demeaning somebody. You're just sharing good news. You're, you're passing on some good information about somebody uh, and so on. So That would not be considered gossip or sharing about a certain experience that may include what others said or did where, you know, you went to meet somebody and they said this and they shared their experience and you had a very nice, meaningful time with them. And you're telling that, you know, I went and met so-and-so, it was a great time, we spent an hour together. That's not gossip. You're you're just sharing about your experience. You're telling that, uh, you know, what, what, what happened and so on. You're not gossiping, but you're sharing something positive. You're not demeaning them. You're not putting anybody down. You're not uh, slandering anybody. So that would not be considered gossip. Or uh, thirdly, an assessment of experience evaluation on individual or situation professional. Now we do this all the time uh, as professionals. You have to assess people's work. So If you are the team leader, you're reporting back to your manager, you sit down and you're discussing each member in your team, you have to say, very honestly, you have to say their positives and their negatives. Now, that's not gossip. That's professional. You are, you have to say what their strengths are and what their weaknesses are, whether they they need improvement or what their capacity is, where they cannot, you know, they've reached the limit or they can do these things, they cannot do those things. So we would not consider that gossip. That's honest evaluation of uh, an individual and that has to happen in, uh, uh, in professional settings and in other ways. Or you're doing an interview of a person, you need to go back and give HR your appraisal of that uh, person, that interview or whatever, you, you know, that interaction. And you have to speak honestly, of course, uh, for the benefit of your organization. Number four, uh, when you're seeking to get a matter resolved, when your intent is to get a matter resolved, like it says in Matthew 18, if you've got something against somebody, go and you know, discuss it with them or go and discuss it with a few elders in your church. So when you go and discuss it with your elders in the church, you need to tell exactly what happened. And uh, you're doing it for, in order to resolve the situation. Now, you would not consider that gossip, but you are, you're presenting information in order to see a solution. Now, if your intent is to malign or backbite and and demean the other person, then that would not be uh, the right intent. But when you're talking about uh, solving a problem, and so you, like it says in Matthew 18, you sit down, you say, these are things that were done. Um, That would not be considered gossip. Number five, uh, when addressing a matter where there is sin and wrongdoing, like the Bible talks about in James 5, 16, confess your faults to one another. Or in Galatians 6, if a brother is overtaken in a fault, that time you need to go. You need to talk about the mistake. You need to talk about the wrongdoing. You need to address the issue. And uh, your whole objective is to see healing, restoration. Uh, that would, again, not be considered gossip. Uh, number six, another situation would be in exposing wrong so that people will not be led astray. The Bible talks about this in in Ephesians 5.11 and 1 Timothy 5.20. In Ephesians 5.11 it says, you know, uh, some of the things unbelievers do, they, you're not, it's, they, it's, you, the light exposes them. So the light of God exposes them. You need to expose something that are wrong so that other people don't fall into the same thing. So you expose that, but your intent is to protect people, not to demean somebody or something. Similarly, 
Uh, when somebody sins, 1 Timothy 5.20 says, if somebody is sinning, you rebuke before all so that others also may fear and not follow that same example. So in an extreme case, when, when correction needs to be done, uh, you, you do that. Right? So these things would not be considered gossip. But in other cases, when, when the intent is, is, is really to put somebody down, to talk how bad they are, to demean them, uh, to backbite, to backstab, uh, those things God says, you will not be a tail bearer bearer among my people. You all with me so far? Amen? All right. Uh, What are some common situations where gossip happens? Community gossip. Now in any community, whatever it could be, uh, people talk. Gossip happens. Now, We do need to talk. We do need to spread news. Uh, For instance, as a local church, we are a community. We are all connected to each other. Uh, You may not know everybody in church, but you probably know 10, 15 people that you're connected with. That's your little community in a bigger community of the local church. So people talk. And the Bible does tell us certain things. For example, Romans 12, 15, the Bible says, Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Now, how will you be able to do that if you don't know what's going on in their lives? And how would you know about it unless somebody told you? So, this whole thing about rejoicing with each other and and, and bearing each other's burdens, weeping with each other, happens as we share information about each other within the community. So somebody's going through a problem. We send them, send an information out saying, it's so and so is going through a problem. Let's all rally around together. At least to the people who know them. We inform them. Uh, let's get together. Let's you know, reach out. Do whatever you can. Pray, call, visit, do something. To show that you're weeping with them or you're standing with them through their difficulty. So uh, news does spread. Information does spread in any community. Or like the first Corinthians 12.26 brings out the same thing. It says, if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. So we learn to rejoice. We learn to uh, uh, be there for each other. And, and that's possible only as we spread information. But we are doing it with the right intent. You with me so far? We are doing it with the right intent. So that we can either rejoice with people or we can suffer or we can endure and and, uh, weep with them, that is take up, uh, share in their burdens. But we must make sure that news within the community doesn't spread with these wrong methods or ways or intentions, which is gossip, slander, backbiting, um, tail-bearing. That we will not allow. In the New Testament, Paul addresses that in many local congregations. For instance, when he's writing to the Corinthians, and the Corinthian church was a very spiritual church, but I think it must have been very difficult to pastor a church like that. They had lots of issues. Very spiritual, but lots of issues happening. And, uh, and Paul, the apostle, is writing to them, and he writes this in 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 20. He says, For I fear lest when I come, I shall not find you, Such as I wish. And that I shall be found by you. Such as you do not wish. In other words, when I, I don't want, you know, when I, I'm afraid that when I come, I'll find you in a city, in a, in in, in, in a manner which you don't want to be found and I don't want to find you in that way. He says, lest there be contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, backbitings, whisperings, conceits, and tumults. You know, there's problems going on there. And some of them that he was referring to there is whispering and backbiting, the issues going on in that little, in that church there. He says, I don't want to see these things among you as a people. So, you understand the Corinthian church. There were people who came from really rough backgrounds. Uh, Corinth was a, 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 a melting pot where people came in there with, with all kinds of backgrounds, all, a lot of things happening. A majority of the church that came in there were, were from very, really difficult backgrounds, whereas Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 6, that some of you were like them, and he, he lists all kinds of wrong things. Some of you came from those backgrounds. So here, God's worked in their hearts, God has set them free, but now they are learning to live out of that new life in Christ, and yet some things 
need to be dealt with. They need to get rid of this backbiting and, and gossiping. They need to get out of that church. When he writes to the Ephesian, to the Ephesian church in, in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5 and 6, Paul says, Now the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from sincere faith, from which some, having strayed, have turned aside to idle talk. He says, look, what's the purpose of our faith, of, our, of the commandments God's given to us? What's the purpose? It is for us to love from a pure heart, to live a life from a good conscience, and to have sincere faith. But when people leave this, they go away from love, their faith, and go away from it. What do they end up doing? They end up in idle talk, just gossiping, doing things that really don't amount to anything. And he, to the same church later on in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 13, he is speaking to young widows. And uh, I, I'm going to read these verses, not just for young widows, but uh, the, the intent of that verse uh, is what I want us to grasp. He says that when people become idle, they begin to in, indulge in gossip and say things they ought not to say. First Timothy 5.13, he says, And besides, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house. And not only idle, but also gossips and busybodies, saying things which they ought not. So what happens when you're idle? Just wander from coffee day to coffee day. <laughs> Just chuma talking, talking about things that, you know, that is gossip and busybody means, you know, you're not minding your own business. You're trying to solve everybody else's issues. Busy being a busybody. And you're saying things which you ought not to. So what's the solution for gossip? Hey, go get a job, you know. Get a life, you know, do something real, do something meaningful. Uh, don't be idle. Because then you have too much time in your hands, you don't know what to do. You go around just talking, being a busybody, and so on. So that's what Paul is writing to these, uh, some of these believers at Ephesians. Same thing he writes even to the Thessalonians, you know. So imagine the co- church in Corinth. The church at Ephesus, the church in Thessalonica. He's addressing this issue of being uh, gossipers and busybodies. He writes the same thing in 2 Thessalonians 3, 11 and 12. He, he rebukes those who, you know, doing the same thing. They are just going around being busybodies. He says, I command you that you, you, you get to work. Right? So, congregations, community life is challenged by this thing of gossip. And Paul is addressing it even in, in those days in his letters, saying, hey, we don't want this uh, in, our, in, our, in our churches, in our, in our communities of believers. Now, there are other places where gossip happens, um, workplace gossip. Now, that's pretty well known, right? It happens next to the coffee machine, or it happens near the restroom, or it happens near the cafe, or wherever, you know, uh, uh, because we people spend, we spend, you know, maybe five to six days of our lives at work, and um, gossip can happen there. Now, remember, there, there is there is the proper use of evaluation and talking about others, which we've already covered. But usually, what happens in even in the workplace context is, you know, you begin to talk ill about your boss in order to put him down, make him look bad, or talk ill about your colleagues, to others, to put them down. And they're not around to defend themselves, they're not around to explain. So workplace gossip happens. But what happens in, an, in, in a workplace where there's a lot of gossip? You'll find that that environment is, is miserable to be a part of. Soon you want to quit. So you don't want to be in that kind of environment where people are talking about each other and putting each other down, backstabbing and backbiting. You're like, no. I don't want to work in this kind of place. Right? And very often, good people leave. Not because the work wasn't good, but the environment was bad with all this gossip happening. So, uh, uh, those of you who are, who are responsible for workplace environments, one of the things that you need to guard about in your workplace is keep your workplace gossip free. If you want to create an environment, a culture in your uh, office or organization that, that people enjoy coming to. There's no gossip allowed here. 
because eventually good people will leave your organization not because the pay was not good not because the work was not good but because of this little thing called gossip and then there's the other form of gossip which some of us might be actually involved in it's called the social media gossip <laughs> hey did you know this 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 and and you know if you're celebrating something that's great and you know the positive is good but the negative when you say bad about somebody on social media it it takes off it goes like wildfire you know you just press post button and as soon as you just press it you don't know how many hundreds probably in some cases many hundreds some cases thousands can actually view something that you've said and in an instant you can tear down somebody's character you can tear down somebody's reputation and they have no way to defend themselves because now it's gone all over so you got to be careful even when you use social media you can uh, uh, you can spread misinformation about situations things so fast uh, and and sometimes we don't even realize the impact of it so let us talk a little bit now about the negative consequences of gossip what are the negative consequences why is it harmful why is it bad and we've mentioned a few already you know first of all time spent in gossip is unproductive it's time that is wasted that's why the bible calls it idle talk it's just pointless talking about people you're already, you're not solving any, any problems you're not addressing the situation head on you're just tearing people down uh, it's it's wasted time secondly gossip erodes trust when uh, in a person when their reputation is marred and their character is assassinated they they destroyed and they they're not there to defend themselves they're not there to explain themselves and people lose trust because of what you've said proverbs 11 verse 13 says a talebearer reveals secrets but he who is of a faithful spirit conceals a matter a tale bearer just you know he he just talks everything about whatever he knows and he's not prudent in in what he says but a trusted friend will conceal protect the reputation of his friend that's a trusted friend a trustworthy friend three as we said here it increases anxiety it demoralizes people uh by spreading inaccurate information wrong information can um can actually act on emotions it can cause anxiety it can cause people to be disturbed uh it can demoralize people just the gossip i don't know if any of you have spent some sleepless nights just because of person a talking to person b about you and it came to you through person c and then you couldn't sleep that night it it disturbs and then it demoralizes next thing you don't want to go to work it's like i don't want to work with these people who are speaking behind my back and tearing me down I don't want to it's demoralizing and imagine if gossip happens in a church community what will people do they stop coming to church they don't want to be part of a community when these things happen they'll go to bedside assembly <laughs> it starts when you want and it ends when you want <laughs> some people are like some people are like man what is that you know <laughs> okay that's matter uh so that's why that's a very important reason why we need to keep our community our church gossip free we don't do this because we want people to come and enjoy being a part of a, a body of believers who value one another who who uh learn to love each other who you know who rejoice with each other we also weep with each other we 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 are there for each other we don't tear anybody down we don't destroy people behind in any way gossip also causes discord and strife and uh, it hurts feelings and ill will and destroys relationships the bible says here in proverbs 16 and verse 28 a perverse man sows strife and a whisperer that means a tale bearer a gossiper separates the best of friends to see the impact two people are really good friends somebody comes and puts some gossip and two best friends parts because of gossip because of tale bearing separates breaks down relationships proverbs 25 verse 23 it says the north wind brings forth rain and an, and a backbiting tongue and angry 
countenance or the living translations new living translation says as surely as 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 a north wind brings rain so a gossiping tongue causes anger it sows anger you become angry with the other person do you know he said this and this about you i said you're angry about the other person without even knowing whether that's true or not and uh, so relationships are bro- broken causes hurt ill feeling in the hearts of people proverbs 26 verse 28 where there is no wood the fire goes out and where there is no tale bearer that is gossiper strife ceases so how do you keep your workplace a pleasant place make sure you the gossipers are not around right where there is no tale bearer strife ceases where there are no gossipers he can make sure there will be no strife there will be no discord there will be the strength of togetherness the strength of unity you know so uh, think about even the emotional impact of gossip even things that happen on social media and and, and some of you know you've been you follow you, f- you follow the news where some some teenagers quit school leave school in some cases they've committed suicide simply because of misinformation spread about them by their friends on social media i don't want to mention names and all that but you probably heard of all this it's happened just that and and, and out of that this whole thing came about this whole term called cyberbullying okay and you've got websites dedicated for that so you can go parents and you can go there what is cyberbullying and how do i handle it we got whole things dedicated for it because here's a new form uh, a new st- new struggle that teenagers go through because of social media so easy do one post a bad post about your friend and all the classmates and everyone has connected to you on facebook or wherever see it and it's such an emotional thing it hurts people spreading misinformation about them and how it can happen so quickly uh and i and i don't want to kind of talk too much about this but uh, in the march 2015 ted talk monica levinsky talks about all that she's been through now this is uh, several years back but her her whole uh, uh the program there was called uh, the price of shame and the thing she brings out was yes you know th- wrong things happened wrong decisions were made but the thing that hurt her the most was in an instant the whole world she was shamed not just before a few people but she was shamed before the whole world this is some of the things she says is in 1998 i was patient zero of losing a personal reputation on a global scale almost instantaneously i lost my reputation my dignity i lost almost everything i almost lost my life we're not condoning what she did or you know on that but i'm just trying to see the help us see the impact of that information spreading and shame being a uh, a uh, uh, att- uh, shame being put upon a person without even being able to hear the real reasons of what happens and the one thing she calls for is compassion online it's like be compassion be considerate even what you do online now god is pretty strict about gossip and i just want to highlight a few verses to for us to know god's mind on this matter you know as soon as we think okay gossip man that's okay you know i'm not murdering anybody i'm not you know stealing a bank or anything uh, it's just a little thing it just you know helps me relax a bit you know <laughs> and so we we kind of treat it so lightly but i want you to see the seriousness of it i just point out a few scriptures here uh, uh, god rebukes his people for indulging in this thing called gossip or slander or tail bearing or backbiting or whatever words you want to use in psalm 50 uh, verses 19 through 21 god says you give your he's speaking to his own people he says you give your mouth to evil your tongue frames deceit you sit and speak against your brother you slander your own mother's son these things you have done and i have kept silent you thought i was altogether like you but i will rebuke you and set them in order before your eyes god saying look you know i was just keeping quiet but i'm stepping in going to rebuke i'm going to bring correction i'm going to set this thing in order so god takes it seriously in proverbs 6 verses 16 through 19 god says there are seven things that are a total abomination to him he doesn't like it at all and then 
He talks about several things. He says a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift and running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. Sowing discord. What causes discord? Gossip, slander, backbiting, backstabbing. We know that it causes strife. It causes anger. It, sows, it separates very friends. It sows discord. And so sometimes you think like, you know, I'm just sharing a story. I'm just saying this about somebody. But if, if the result of what you've done is sowing discord, God says it's an abomination. I don't like it. In other words, he says, I hate it. it I, I detest it. And in Romans chapter 1, this is very interesting. Romans 1, 28 to 32, gossip, backbiting is in the same list of things as murder, as adultery, as, as uh, uh, Everything else, there's a lot of evil and gossip and slander is in that same list. So you say, what do you think God, God thinks about it? It's as bad as the rest of the stuff. So we can't take it lightly. So essentially these are things we must not engage in. You must not be involved in these things. So in closing, let's talk for a few minutes on, you know, how do you handle this? Okay, well, what if there are people around you are gossiping, they are in, involving in these kinds of things. Uh, how do you handle it? Just a few thoughts here. First of all, I want to challenge you and I to rise above gossip. Let's be as a people who live above this. This is not the level at which we live. Rise above it. Don't participate in it and don't descend to the, descend to the level in, uh, of, uh, of that level that people engage. So whether it's in your workplace, whether it's to church, whether it's some other community that you're part of, when you see people engaging in gossip, speaking bad about other people who are in that community known to you, you don't participate. You don't get involved. You don't go down to that level. Psalm 34 verse 13. Keep your tongue from evil and your speak, lips from speaking Deceit. Psalm 39 verse 1. The psalmist said, I will guard my ways lest I sin with my tongue. I will restrain my mouth with a muzzle while the wicked are before me. So while they're talking wicked, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. I'm not going to engage in this. I'm not going to participate in in this kind of thing. Psalm 139 and verse 4. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. So when you speak, you speak with that sense of responsibility. God's listening to these things I'm saying. God knows those words. Second is confront lovingly if possible. When you know somebody's doing this, involving, suppose you're in a group and somebody starts this, you you, you stop it lovingly. Say, hey guys, uh, let's not not go down that road. Let's not engage in that. Do it lovingly. Uh, Hey, let's leave that person out. Let's not talk about it. So you confront it lovingly. Or if somebody else is actually spreading the gossip and you know who it is, you go to that person. Say, hey guy, I know I've heard that you know, you've been doing this. Can you please stop it? It's not helping people. It's not helping anybody. So you confront it lovingly. You try to address the matter so that the rumors stop. Another thing we can do is just let it die out. Don't fuel it. You don't go and pass it on. You be the person with whom it stops. Don't fuel that gossip. Let it die out. And another thing you can do is to pray. And if you're a victim of slander or gossip, just pray. Let God step in. Psalm 31 verses 13 to 16, the psalmist finds himself in that situation. He says, for I hear the slander of many. Fear is on every side while they take counsel against, together against me. They scheme to take away my life. So here he's, he's hearing the slander. He's hearing people say all kinds of things against him. And, uh, and causing fear, and they, they're trying to do things against him. But what does he do? He says, verse 14, But as for me, I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face shine upon your servant. Save me for your mercy's sake. So he says, look, all these people are slandering. They're saying all these things against me. What, what am I going to do? God, my eyes are on you. My times are in your hands. Let your mercy shine on me. You save me. I remember a long time ago, I think maybe two, three years, two, three years ago, I don't remember exactly when, uh, something funny happened. It's kind of related. I don't know if it makes sense. But yeah, somebody called. They were attending APC at that time. They said, uh, well, I want to meet with you. I said, okay, you're welcome. Usually when people want to meet with me, I have them come and meet with me in the office. 
uh, let's just save time. So I said, okay, I can give you a time. I said, no, I want, you, I want to meet you at a coffee day. So you come and meet me in a coffee day. I said, okay, fine. So I went to the coffee day that they wanted to meet me in. I went there. And uh, to my surprise, uh, this person came along with, uh, I think, um, two or three other people were there. I said, okay, fine. Then he said, uh, you've been talking about me to all the other pastors in the city. Uh, and I have a shock. I didn't know this was the subject that we were going to talk about. And then he started mentioning the names of all these pastors. And then he gave a long list. And he said, you've been telling them this and you've been telling them this about me. I uh, wait waited for him to finish and all that. Then I said, I want to say two things. First, of all the five or six pastors you mentioned, I, don't, I know only one pastor and all those pastors that you mentioned. I don't know any of the others. I never met them. And there's one pastor's name that you did mention the last time I met him was seven years ago. That's the first thing. The second thing I, was, I told him, I said, I want you to know I'm quite busy. And honestly, I'm too busy. I haven't thought of you in many months. <laughs> I told him that. Now, of course, they were attending APC, but I have to be honest. I don't know all your names. Uh, and I don't, I'm not sitting every day thinking about each one of you. <laughs> Just in case. So I had to tell him that. I said, listen, I haven't even thought of you in so many months. So where I'm too busy to go around talking to other pastors about you. I don't even have time to think about you. I told him that. And it came as a shock, but it also came as a shock to me. It's like, from where did all this come from? You know, how would people imagine these kinds of things? You know, they think I'm spending my time sitting and thinking about people in church. No. Life is busy. Got a lot of things to do. Many more things to be done, right? So um, that was all. But then I I learned just to, you know what? The moment I leave coffee day, I'm leaving this matter behind. It is so unimportant. I'm not even going to spend one more second thinking about it. It doesn't concern me at all. To think that somebody would come up with such things. Right? Just, just let it go. It is, you know, life, there are more important things in life than to worry about these kinds of things. So, in the same way, when you, know, when, when you find that people are making up stories and saying these kinds of things, you know, listen, you live above these things. You've got more important things in life to do than waste time on such things. Amen? So, the call here this morning is for all of us to build a community, to build a people. Let's, let's be a community of people who have zero tolerance for gossip. Zero tolerance for backbiting, slander, backstabbing, uh, tail bearing. Just zero tolerance. We have, we, we have no tolerance for these things. Um, these will not exist among us. Amen? And... Uh, Keep in mind that gossip is a weed that troubles and chokes God's beautiful garden. You know, it may seem like a harmless thing, but it really troubles and chokes the garden of God, God's people, the church. So let us create a culture. If that's what we want, we have to create it. Each one of us had to create that culture. Let's create a culture and develop self-discipline that keeps his garden, that's the church, weed free. Amen? It begins with all of us, each one of us. Let's have a beautiful garden where we can all grow and thrive and and glorify God uh, through the fruit we bear and, and the life we live. Let's stand to our feet, please. I want us to stand here as we take a few moments to pray before we close. I would like you just to pray and say, God, help me to be careful about this one thing, my life. For some of us, we may think it's such a small thing. It's just just a light thing. We may not even be paying attention to it. But in God's eyes, it's held differently. This whole thing about gossip, about speaking bad about somebody else behind their back. Not giving them, they're not there to defend themselves. They're not there to explain themselves. Do you gain anything out of it? No. Is this help the situation? No. 
helping them become better no so then don't speak don't talk so could each one of us standing here just pray before god and say god i know i've indulged in it in some way or another not maybe you know sometimes unintentionally forgive what i've done and help me god to be careful with my words when i speak i'll always do it to lift people up i'll do it to in a right way with the right intent even if i have to speak truth that hurts let me speak it in love let me speak the truth in love love edifies love builds up love encourages so let me speak the truth in love practice this for your home for your family for your place of work for the church any community that you're part of practice this father we just pray for the grace that cleanses our tongue and and helps us lord to watch over our words and and just to be gracious with our words to edify people with our words to even if it means to correct to correct lord to build up even if it means to exhort lord to do it in a way that will bless people give us clean hands god give us pure hearts and clean lips so oh god we pray and father we just pray that you help us be your body where people come in and are refreshed and renewed and built up because we create a culture we create an environment where from the smallest to the tallest to the strongest all of us can thrive in the house of the lord all of us can grow in an environment that's supportive that's encouraging that's loving that's caring god help us to create that environment with the words we speak with the way we speak we thank you god and help us lord to practice this in our place of work and in school and college to bless lives to bless people so we can create an environment where others are built up and strengthened we thank you god if there are people here who have been hurt because of gossip hurt hurt because of misinformation that was spread about you would you just look to god would you just pray about it right now and just say god you know what happened you know how i hurt i was because so and so you know other other people spread wrong information about me it could have happened you know verbally it could have happened online but you say god i look to you my times are in your hands you have mercy on me you cause your face to shine upon me in other words you put your favor on my life others may have tried to slander others may have tried to sling mud others may have tried to backbite or backstab but god you put your favor on my life would you just pray that prayer like how the psalmist prayed and release the matter to god settle it once for all say god i'm i'm releasing it i'm leaving it behind because my times the affairs of my life are in your hands Father we just thank you for what you are doing in our hearts and our lives because of your word and because of your anointing God we just thank you we bless you God we worship you we thank you God let's call our worship team up we can just sing a little bit here if I honor that the team is here receive Jesus Christ into your heart Maybe you've gone to church many many times maybe you have a Christian name maybe you were sprinkled as a little infant whatever but if you have never received Jesus Christ into your heart and asked him to be your lord and your savior and to make you a new creation to change the very nature inside you and to give you his life his nature to forgive your sins and to make you a child of god if you've never prayed that prayer and i just want to take a moment to lead you in doing that does anyone here if you've never done this before 
Would you just pray this with me? Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive my sins and make me a child of God. Make me a new creation, a new person. And help me to follow you and you alone for the rest of my life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Is anyone here in this auditorium, you prayed this prayer for the very first time with me this morning. Could you please raise your hand? Anybody, you prayed this prayer for the very first time this morning. Could you just raise your hand? I see one hand up there. Anybody else? Just put your hand up high. Great. Praise God for that. Anybody else? You prayed this prayer for the very first time this morning up on the balcony. Just put your hand up high. Our there's another hand. Congratulations. God bless. Our greeters will come and give you a bag right up there as well. Just put your hand up and just make sure you get this bag. It's, our, uh, it's a bag that has things, a material in it to help you grow in your decision that you made this morning. It'll tell you what to do next. Uh, I encourage you to read the Bible, read some books that are available there. Be a part of a good local church where you can keep growing in your faith and learn what it means to be. Uh, a new creation in Christ. God bless you. Thank you for doing that. Let's close. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you and lift up his countenance on you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We'd love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also, visit our website www.apcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.